Hi, our names are Valerie, Allie, and Elaine. We will be explaining prospect theory, but first things first, let's talk about some facts. Prospect theory was proposed by Daniel Kahneman and Amos Traversky in 1979 and developed until 1992. Kahneman won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 2002 for prospect theory, changing modern economic theory forever. Kahneman wrote Thinking Fast and Slow, which was recognized by the New York Times in 2011 as a bestseller. His book discusses decision-making process as well as several cognitive biases including, but not limited to, utility theory and prospect theory. However, before we talk about prospect theory, we have to first discuss its predecessor, utility theory. Utility theory was proposed in 1738 by the Swiss mathematician Daniel Bernoulli. It was known as moral expectation, as opposed to the theory of mathematical expectation, until the mid-20th century. Utility theory explains why most people are risk-averse when it comes to making decisions that could result in a loss, especially in situations such as gambling. The theory is based on the assumption that everyone is rational in all the decisions that they make. For example, you are given the choice to either flip a coin, heads is $100 and tails is $0, or the choice to gain $50. According to utility theory, people are more likely to choose the gain of $50. Utility theory focuses on the aspect of how useful the money is to you. A gain of $1 means more to you than if you had a million dollars and you gained a dollar. Going back to the example, in regards to wealth, people choose the option of getting $50 because it has the highest utility since it carries no risk, rather than the possibility of receiving double or nothing with the gamble. Prospect theory examines the same core concepts as utility theory. However, it includes the individual's reference point in regards to decision making, for example, gambling. Therefore, happiness can be determined by the recent change in their wealth due to their reference points. Reference points are important for later comparisons of their current and past wealth. Prospect theory is about the individual's gains and losses rather than utility or usefulness of their wealth. In simple terms, we dislike losing more than we like winning. Prospect theory goes on to explain why it is that people may not always be risk averse. When faced with bad outcomes, people become risk seeking in hopes of receiving the better outcome. Here we see a graphical representation of prospect theory. The curve in the upper right represents gains, while the curve in the lower left represents losses. Looking at the curves on either side of the graph, we can see that the decline on the left is steeper than the incline on the right. This indicates that losses are more salient than gains. Now that we've gone over the general ideas of both utility and prospect theories, we'd like to highlight some of the key differences. Kahneman addresses two key differences in these theories. First, utility theory does not take into account where you started from and how it will feel to shift from that point of view. For example, if you have $1 million and your friend has $9 million and tomorrow you both have $5 million, how happy will you both be? According to Bernoulli, both you and your friend will be equally happy tomorrow as you both have $5 million and therefore the same amount of utility from the money. However, if you look at the numbers, you can see that you will be much happier than your friend. Prospect theory is able to predict this as it takes into account that you gained $4 million while your friend lost $4 million. Second, prospect theory takes into account that people are not entirely rational. People do not make their choices based solely upon which choice has more utility, but upon which choice is less aversive or causes them less loss. Utility theory explains why most people are risk averse and is based on the assumption that everyone is rational in decision making. This theory also examines the usefulness of money or wealth in each individual's particular scenario. 
Prospect theory examines some of the same core concepts as utility theory, but it includes the ideas of reference points in regards to an individual's wealth. Prospect theory focuses more on the individual's gain and losses rather than the usefulness or utility of the money. Furthermore, prospect theory examines why people may become risk-seeking if they are put in a situation where every outcome is a negative one, making the individual risk-seeking in hopes of choosing the better of the two outcomes. Prospect theory is important because it exposed the flaws in Bernoulli's theory of expected utility. Not to mention, prospect theory helps us further understand the influence that individuals' viewpoints have on their decisions and how they judge outcomes. To wrap things up, Retired, so I don't have an office anywhere else. My name is Daniel Kahneman, and I'm Professor Emeritus at Princeton. I don't hoard, and I don't hoard ideas either. Uh, if something doesn't work, I'll just move right on. I do linger on ideas that do seem to work. I mean, you know, I'm a perfectionist and so on. But I have never, you know, had a grand vision or or wanted to transform things. Uh, a lot of what I have done is, is based on, you know, sort of introspection and, and casual observation. You know, the, the classic story that people are very surprised, but in fact, they sometimes run a kind of audition. Uh, in Stockholm, and I had been the year before. And then the call came. I went to the room where my wife was exercising, actually, and I said, I got it. And, you know, she said, you got what? So <laughs> that's... Uh... You know, I love the process. I've done almost all my work with other people. So my friend and colleague, Amos Tversky, he and I, we just about preferred each other's company to the company of almost anyone else. My bent was to transform philosophical or general questions into more answerable questions about people. Uh, being Jewish has something to do with it. You know, Eastern European Jews, they were not allowed to farm the land. So uh, it restricts your world, really, uh, as I said, to people and words. I was born in Tel Aviv, actually, but when you are uh, an academic, this is almost, that's your nationality, that other tribe. You know, I would say that academic life is not for everybody, and it's not a matter of talent. They've got to be able to exaggerate the importance of what they're doing. Otherwise, you know, you're there in the trenches doing your tiny little thing, which is your contribution to science. So you've got to be able to, to see that it's great. If you think your work is insignificant, if you cannot delude yourself into thinking your work is significant, find another career. <laughs>